Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant TV. In a recent trailer for Ridley Scott's new film Prometheus, we got a sneak peek of some laser-like sweeping technology that the explorers use to either detect danger or measure topography or possibly to make a really good cup of futuristic laser-brewed space coffee. You know, it's not really clear yet. So in this episode of Red Giant TV, director Seth Worley will show you how to create your own sweeper effect so that you can scan the exotic topography of your office hallway or perhaps just make a really good cup of futuristic laser-brewed office coffee. Take it away, Seth. Hello, everyone. This is Seth Worley, and I'm going to show you how I did this uh, little effect inspired by the uh, Prometheus trailer. This is a the plate, the plate that I shot um, with just my hands and a uh, little camping tent light that uh, I have. I've also used those as landmines in movies, too, as futuristic landmines. Anyway, uh, so first thing we're going to do is take this plate. We made a comp, and we're going to uh, trim the work area so that uh, we're only tracking that part of the shot because that's all we need tracked. We're going to take the Foundry's camera tracker and drop that on and click track. Part of me wonders if that joke is getting old and uh, the other part of me knows that the answer is no, it's not. So anyway, once we've tracked it, we click solve and then it's solved. And uh, then we will move down and click Create Scene. And it creates our scene by creating a camera and a null object. So now we're going to create our own null object. And this null object is going to represent the movement of our sweeper, the movement of our lasers and all kinds of crazy crap. We uh, are going to call this sweeper null. Named after the great sweeper null of, of history. So uh, make sure null is 3D. Uh, and then you're going to go through and... Uh, keyframe this movement throughout uh, and the reason we're doing it to a null so we can parent stuff to it is because we're going to be changing this animation through trial and error throughout the entire process you want it to curve up and back down as it hovers across down the hallway and then flies back toward you once we got that we're going to create a new solid and call it particular and then we're going to pre-compose that before we drop particular on and call it lasers and then we can double click lasers We'll go in here and we'll apply a particular to our particular layer. There's probably a simpler way to go about creating these lasers, but you know me, I don't know the simpler way. Uh, we're going to go down and we could select a uh, swarm of fireflies. That was one of the first ones I tried and that, you know, gets a decent effect. But actually we're going to select electron dance and um, we're gonna make some changes to it. First we're gonna go into our particle and our emitter. Let's open them both up. Let's decrease our amount of particles. And um, let's turn off our aux system. So now we just have our main particles. And um, let's change the life of them to about five seconds long. Let's uh, increase the size of them. Let's see, they're about three right now, so let's put them in about five. And then uh, we are going to alter the physics, go into air, and uh, decrease the spin frequency. So now they're spinning much slower, it's a little too slow. Let's put it at about 10. Span amplitude, let's put it at about 20, 50. And then let's change it to red. Just I'm gonna be working in the red colors, just just in case you guys want to try and go crazy like in the Prometheus trailer. But I picked. Uh, we'll end up washing this out to be more of a white, just because of the color of the camping light. We'll create a new adjustment layer. Rename that adjustment layer to uh, light rays. Just some light rays going on. We're gonna drop CC light rays onto the light rays, and uh, move our center to the center and increase the radius and you'll start seeing these light rays coming up and uh, increase the intensity just below the intensity out completely um, 
We don't to mess with warp softness. Uh, radius, you know, it's trial and error figuring out the best radius to get where we get this laser effect. Now, obviously, it's not a, you know, straight edge laser. So uh, we're going to create a new adjustment layer and call it vector blur. I know I kind of use this a lot, um, more than I probably should, but, you know, I don't know any other ways. So vector blur, uh, take our amount and turn it up. And now we get much more of a straight edge laser uh, going on. Those straight edge lasers are the only lasers I need. Spin frequency, let's actually turn it a little up more to 15 so we get much more fast frantic lasers. Fast frantic straight edge lasers. Turn our particles down, maybe that's 7. And uh, so yeah, we're going to actually select all of those and pre-compose those now. Call them light rays. Now we'll create a new solid, and we're going to call this one Form. Let's drop Form onto there. We're going to go down here, and we're going to select Wipe Thing 1. And uh, we're going to go in here, go to World Transform, turn off the animation on the X offset so it centers itself up or didn't center itself up, and then we're going to go into our spherical field, and we're going to mess with this spherical field and animate it. We're going to start by turning the strength up to 100, and we'll see now there what the radius kind of is of that sphere. Turn the radius up huge to where it clips the, the uh, edges of the screen. And then we're going to go to our first frame of our timeline, and we're going to... Our, uh, we're going to basically animate keyframe the radi the strength of our sphere to where if you go even a little negative it kind of like looks like it's kind of imploding uh, which is cool so we're going to keyframe that so it starts totally imploded and then a few frames in explodes up to full spherical intensity and so then that's, uh, that's the emerging of our our sweeper field which would be cool so once that's done, we'll create a new adjustment layer for, you guessed it, vector blurring and drop CC vector blur onto that adjustment layer uh, turn the amount up and then it's just kind of up suit whatever suits your taste to make it look kind of liquidy and crazy to kind of increase visibility, go in here and change the size of the particles in form and then go and change the color to red just in case you want to, you know Prometheatize it. Uh, you can turn the size up of, of the particles and that increases the visibility significantly. So then uh, we create another adjustment layer. We rename this guy Glow and then uh, we drop a Glow filter on it. And uh, we adjust the threshold, radius, and intensity to suit our preferences. Then we're going to select all of our new little layers, not light rays though, and pre-compose it, call it force field. And then we'll turn light rays back on, and now they're both combined there. And it looks like nothing really special, it looks really kind of hokey and bad, uh, which is just how we need it. So then we're going to come in here, we're going to drop hue correct, I drop hue saturation on here, and I turn the saturation pretty much all the way down. First, I'm actually going to hue it to be a little bit of blue in case I decide I want to have a little bit of saturation in there. It'll be colder saturation. And then I'll turn the lightness up here, and I will make that 3D. And then I want to uh, basically go to the first keyframe. Well, I'll also uh, Z rotation, put it on about 90 degrees. And now I'm actually going to go to the first keyframe of our sweeper null animation and copy the coordinates of the position there and paste them and basically copy them into uh, the coordinates of our laser's position. So then I can parent it the sweeper null and it will be exactly where that that null is throughout and this is where we realize we're gonna have to mess with some scaling uh, and also we'll realize that null probably isn't moving far enough down the hallway so we start with a lot of things we will mess around with the timing first off 
we want the sweeper to trigger and turn on uh, once it's on its way back down from being thrown into the air. And then we mess with the scale to make it. Oh, and then let's do see. Let's do some X rotation adjustment here. Um, you want it basically to scale it to the point to the point where it looks like the sides are hitting the walls and the tops and bottom are hitting the floor and the ceiling. So through trial and error, once you get that looking pretty appropriate, uh, get to the point in the timeline where the uh, form should collapse back into itself and adjust your keyframes uh, as you see fit. And that basically just means going in here to sphere one, setting a keyframe, uh, and then going a few frames in and then collapsing it in on itself like you did before, putting it to a little negative than zero. So now you go back in, it should collapse at just about the right time like that and then oh we also need to go in and keyframe the opacity so our lasers disappear at the same time you could keyframe the emitter in particular but I'm gonna go ahead and just keyframe the opacity here so we lose the whole layer uh, then I'm gonna go in I'm gonna add glow to this layer and again it's just kind of suitable to preference in terms of threshold radius and intensity starting to look pretty good. So I'm going to select it, go up here, go to layer styles and select inner glow. Now it's not going to work at first because we need to double click on that, our pre-composition. Go in and create a new solid, a black solid, and that black solid is going to be our background and that will allow us to get away with what we're about to do. Boom, there we go. Then we adjust the blending mode to add. We'll go in here and actually go back to hue saturation and turn the lightness down back down to zero. And then play with the threshold and intensity of glow to where it's not looking as, you know, bad. We'll adjust uh, various settings and layer styles to get it looking right there. Make sure saturation is turned all the way down. But this inner glow now is going to create that surface interaction uh, with, you know, with the wall and with our force field. It takes a little bit of meandering to figure out how to get the the glow and everything looking right. But then we're going to um, go in and keyframe the opacity of our inner glow um, effect. So we'll start at zero. And you want it to, uh, come like you want basically the form to have filled the, in all the frames before that, uh, before that effect uh, shows up. Otherwise, it... It's happening too soon. So once you have that looking, you can adjust the size of the uh, glow effect. And then you'll want to adjust the opacity to where it turns off at the end once the form collapses. So then we're going to go and we're going to create a new light. And we're going to call it flare light. Now, uh, just, I mean, you can, this is just a precaution. Go in into material options of any 3D layer, which the only one right now is our lasers layer, and turn off accepts lights. And uh, go into flare light and base and go to the first keyframe of your sweeper null again and type in the coordinates from that, that that position. So then your light is in the exact same spot, and then parent the light to the sweeper null. So now that light is moving about with our device. And then select that light, go to Window, select Null 3D Flare, and then click Light Factory, and it will create an adjustment layer with a light, with a flare attached to that light. Go in, select Options, select Load, go to uh, go to your Guru Presets, which are awesome. Go to Harry Frank's uh, Guru Presets and select Panamorphic. And uh, there is our pretty cool flare we're going to use. I'm going to turn off depth scaling it's really your choice your preference um, then I'm gonna go into the intensity of the light options and I'm gonna set it at about 50 maybe not 25 then I'm gonna alt click on the timer right there and type wiggle and then parentheses the first number will be the amount of frequency or speed in the and then comma and then 25 which is the amount and you can change this around through trial and error as much as you want. I've changed it several times. Uh, and then you want to go in and adjust the keyframe, the opa opacity of your flares so that the flare will come on as the, you know, as the force field 
uh, shows up as the form explodes, and then you're going to keyframe it to go away when form implodes back into itself at the end. So that's pretty awesome. Um, then after that is done, we need a device. So here I have filmed that device hanging from tape because I couldn't find string in front of a green screen spinning around and I've looped it. So now I'll take that and I will start the spin at the point and I'll start the track right at the point where it's supposed to sh where the device shows up. That's right when my hand comes in tossing it. Then I'm going to double click on it. Select our pen tool and I'm going to create a mask around it so that I'm cutting off the tape from above. And I'm really lazy with the tape. I'm sorry. I was in a hurry. Uh, put Primat here onto that guy. Uh, click Select Background and select our green. And that goes away immediately. Clean back, or clean foreground. We'll clean that guy up. And so there we go. Now we're going to uh, make sure, we have to make sure that our layer is 3D. And then we're going to copy the coordinates of our Oh, we're going to make sure lights are turned off. And then we're going to copy our coordinates from the first keyframe of the sweeper null. And you can see we definitely have to scale that guy down. So once we scale him down, rotate him 90 degrees. And he's parented to that null. He will, uh, hopefully, he's not parented to the null yet. So we'll go back to that first frame and parent him to the null and now it moves with the null now it's doing what we want it to do so it just takes some tinkering with the scale and stuff and there it is so now I've got to catch it so we've gonna actually create you know put that arm in the foreground so we're gonna go down and select that uh, plate layer duplicate it and select the duplicated layer and just get rid of camera tracker on that layer. Pull that guy up to the top. Make sure it's still underneath the flare layer though. And above the 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 device layer. Then we'll create a mask around my arm. We're gonna feather the mask. And then we're gonna mess with the expansion enough to where it looks like that device is behind my hand. Keyframe the path for those few frames here just so the path is wrapped around my arm. And then once that's done, the uh, we're going to have to keyframe the device so that the device moves down with my hand. So we'll keyframe the sweeper null, essentially, uh, from that point that it hits my hand and then we'll move it down with my hand. So then we're going to create a new adjustment layer and we're going to call it Mojo. And drop Mojo on. Select Mojito. And uh, there, it looks pretty good. Now there's one more thing that we can do uh, to kind of help sell the effect and that's to add some light on the walls and the ceiling. Um, an easy way to do that so that it lines up with the animation and the form and craziness is to duplicate our laser lasers layer and immediately pre-compose it. Call it Laser Light. Could have called it Laser Lotus for you community fans. Um, laser Light. Double click on it, open it up. And then we're going to create a new solid. A black solid. And make sure it's above the lasers layer and decrease the scale a little bit so we create this really weird uh, border uh, with the lasers layer. So now we're going to go back in and uh, turn the layer style off of the laser light layer. It's our inner glow. And then we're going to add fast blur and turn that guy up a lot. And then uh, we're going to go in and increase the scale. Now you start to see kind of what that is. It's this blurred light layer. But let's actually go ahead 
and apply some glow uh, to this. We're just glow, glowing all over the place in this thing. Uh, increase the intensity a lot, and the threshold down so that it's like really, really bright. And there, now it's uh, freakishly bright. So we're going to turn the opacity down a little bit uh, and mess around with the scale a little bit. But then it's paired into that null, so it'll fly up and down with the device simulating light on the surfaces. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So if you can figure out a way to use Brometheus in a sentence this week, uh, I can't reward you with anything. I made this tutorial for you, so enjoy it. Thanks, Seth. That is the best laser brewed spaced iced coffee I have ever had. It's a, it's a grande, by the way. Yeah. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to learn more about Seth and his work, check out his site at SethWorley.com. There's great stuff there, including his web series, Adventure Now, and The Time Closet. Don't forget, you can always download a free trial of any of the Red Giant products that Seth used in this video at RedGiantSoftware.com. And you can get tons of free presets for Red Giant plugins on RedGiantPeople.com. In fact, Seth has been putting up a bunch of presets that he's created through his work as a director and as both a visual effects and motion graphics artist. Speaking of free, check out Colorista Free and LUT Buddy, two free color correction plugins that we're giving away for, that's right, free. You can find those at RedGiantSoftware.com. Finally, I want to mention that if you're looking to keep up with what we're doing at Red Giant, whether it's a tutorial, a contest, a product release, or whatever, just follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and on our blog. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. See you next time.